Welcome Lake Point. We're so glad that you're here and joining us this morning. Please sing with us, Come, Now is the Time to Worship. right now I just want to invite you to take a deep breath try and be still I'm sure you have a million things running around in your head like I do um, but I just want you to take this time to be intentional and reflect on what God is doing in your life and worship with us whether that's um, just meditating on the words whether that's closing your eyes whether that's um, just listening whether that's reading a Bible verse whatever that looks like for you and um, through this song I hope that you are reminded that God knows us and that he cares for us. And um, sometimes all we have to do is praise him. Sometimes all we need to do is worship. Sometimes we just need to bow down and sometimes we need to just be still. Some of you may have noticed that we have una mapa de Mexico atrás de nosotras. We have a little map of Mexico behind us. And in light of this, you may hear a little bit of Espanol in this song.
andado fue por ti tu amor es mi gran defensa me lleva del desierto seco solo quiero Quiero postrarme en tu amor, sumergirme en tu aleluya, me has salvado. Tu poder me dijo. Now we are going to sing the song called So Will I. In Espanol, se llama Yo Tambien, but we'll leave this one in English. This song talks about the greatness of our God. He created the stars and the seas and the creatures of the land when he spoke them into being. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Some of the lyrics of this song say, Lord, as you speak, galaxies are born. If the stars were made to worship, so will I. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. This same God sent his one son, fully God and fully human, Jesus Christ, to the earth that he had spoken into being. Because of Jesus' birth, life, death, and most importantly, his resurrection, he is God of creation and God of our salvation. We find new life in Christ. And so we sing and worship and adore our beautiful, glorious Savior. So please sing this song with us and worship this Lord, our Savior.
Right now we have two really interesting real life minutes, first by Beth Haynes and then by Trenton Griffith down in Mexico. And following those, Doug Brush will lead us in prayer. Good morning, Lake Point. This is Beth Haynes and Andrew's gonna help me here and we wanna show you something that has been a really neat ministry opportunity that came about because of the stay at home order that we hope to continue even after it's over. Um, we took an old sawhorse and Josh painted it so it wouldn't look quite so old. And then Joanna wrote the questions on there for us. How can we pray for you? How can we help you? And we painted it and made it decorative. And then um, the first thing we did is made this little box that says, we are followers of Jesus and we believe that God hears and answers prayer. We would love to pray for you. Write your prayer request on a card. If you have a need that we can help with, please leave your contact information warmly, the Haynes family. And that's got cards and writing utensils in it. And we left hand sanitizer so that people would feel comfortable using it and they can put their cards in this bucket. And we um, have gotten prayer requests from people just about every day, one or two prayer requests for weeks. And at first people were responding a lot about um, requests for things having to do with the coronavirus and praying for healthcare workers and so on. And then as time has gone by, we've gotten a lot more personal requests from people, prayers for families and babies on the way, prayers for marriages, for parents to stop fighting. And um, we've gotten to pray for all these things that people passing our house have asked us to pray for. So we added some tracts here. If anybody was open to taking a tract that explains the gospel, these are the spiritual journey ones that you may recognize if you've heard Josh or Janet Reed recommend them. And we put a note out here telling people we are continuing to pray for those requests and if they wanted to connect with us more personally. The kinds of things we've been praying for have made us want to be able to help people more if they'd be open to that connection. So we um, have been really excited about how effective this has been, how much people have participated into it. I think people are open to um, spiritual things right now and using our sidewalk has been a way to connect when we can't see people face to face. Uh, so if you would consider putting a prayer sign out by your sidewalk or somewhere near your house, I'd really encourage you to do it and I'd love to hear about how it goes and what response you get at your house. Hello everybody, uh, I am here at, it is spring break for the mission so we have a bunch of games, that's my friend Franco over there being crazy. He, uh, he actually, he's been a blessing, he's come down for the virus, but they're all now playing octoball, we just got done with the long jump, before that we had basketball and then kickball as we know it, they call it foot base. But yeah, this is our week, tomorrow they have an obstacle course, so as you can see some guys are jumping over there. But yeah, so I actually work in maintenance most of the time from 9 to 5. But today, or at least this week in the mornings, I am helping out with, we call it the Olympics. So there's four teams, and over there they get gold, medal, and bronze at the end, as you can see the Olympic symbols over in the corner, over there. And uh, yeah, so right, that's actually what's happening right now, and this is at the mission right now. I know it's not self-quarantined and social distancing, but... We kind of social distance from the town. I can't go into town, but I mean around here it's all right. So that's what we got so far. Uh, I'll keep you updated a bit more. That's uh, going on. It's kind of short, kind of sweet. I'll probably do a few of these. And uh, yeah, that's. See you guys later. Uh, let's uh, join in prayer now. I have any father. We just bow before you this morning, and we would ask you, Father, just through the Holy Spirit to open up the hearts of everyone that's listening because this goes beyond the listening it goes to our neighbors and friends and our family the things that we learn from the message this morning but we as we come together as a congregation even though we're many miles apart God can still be in our hearts he can still use we would ask you to bless Dean and all those that are participating in the service this morning that will be a rememberable time in our lives for the, for the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. Hello, Lake Point. Today we continue our study of the letter in the New Testament known as 1 Thessalonians, and we call our study a church that is doing well. In the New Testament, there's a concept known as the priesthood of all believers. 
Uh, here's the idea. In the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, you couldn't go directly to God. You had to go through a priest, a man who had been specially ordained and consecrated. For instance, you didn't offer your own sacrifice directly to God. No, you brought it to the priest, and he offered it for you. In a sense, you couldn't even pray directly to God. You had to go through the priest. It was disheartening and frustrating. But in the New Testament, under the New Covenant, because of the work of Christ, you no longer have to go through another person, a priest. Jesus is the only mediator we need. So there's no longer a special class of clergy who can go to God in a way that other believers can't. All believers are on equal footing before God. And we call this concept the priesthood of all believers. In a sense, every believer is a priest who can approach God directly through Jesus. It is a beautiful and empowering thing. So does it surprise you that when Jesus' disciples took the gospel out to the world, anywhere they planted a church, they also appointed men to be over that church, to be over the Christians of that church. The disciples, who probably understood the priesthood of all believers better than anyone, appointed men to be over other Christians. We're told in uh, Acts 14.23, Paul appointed elders in each church. We're told that Peter appointed elders in the churches in Asia, and he urged them to be shepherds over God's flock, 1 Peter 5, 2. James wrote in James 5, 14, that if you're sick and you desire to be healed, it is the elders of the church that you are to call and ask to pray for you and to anoint you with oil. So while it's true that all Christians are equal before God, and uh, priests are not needed to speak to him, we can approach him directly. It's also true that the church is not a complete free-for-all where people can do whatever they want. We need godly leaders over us who will care for us, who will teach us, and who will occasionally, if needed, correct us. This is God's leadership plan for the Church of Jesus Christ. So it's not surprising that in Paul's letter to the Christians in Thessalonica, he writes to them about their attitude towards their church leaders. Listen now as Caleb Yonker reads from 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 12 and 13. Uh, Pastor Dean asked me to read a passage uh, for Sunday service, and uh, it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 through, uh, thir well, like the first half of 13. So, now we ask you, brothers and sisters, to acknowledge those who work hard among you, who care for you in the Lord, and who admonish you. Hold them in the highest uh, regard and love because of their work. Thanks, Caleb. So this short passage lists three things that the elders do for the church, and then it lists two ways that church members are to respond to their church leaders. So three things elders do for the church. And the first one is, they work hard among you, verse 12. So being an elder is not a ceremonial position. The elders of the church are to work hard, teaching, calling, praying, visiting, leading. If we're not working hard, we're not doing it right. When a man is first asked to serve as an elder of the church, he needs to examine if he has the time and the energy to do this arduous, time-demanding work. Let me just say from experience that there's so much that the elders are doing that you probably don't even know about. I think one of the reasons that Paul feels the need to tell the Thessalonian Christians that their elders work hard is because so much of their work is actually behind the scenes. The second thing elders do for the church is they care for you in the Lord, verse 12. The Greek word translated care has the idea of they take the lead. So the King James Version and the English Standard Version both translate this as they are over you in the Lord. The New American Standard translates it as, they have charge over you in the Lord. And the Holman translation says, they lead you in the Lord. So while elders are to care for their people, this word includes more than that. 
Elders have the responsibility for the spiritual lives of the people under their care. This leads us to the third thing elders do for the church. They admonish you, verse 12. Whenever Paul uses this word, it's between people who have a relationship. You would never admonish a person with whom you do not already have a spiritual relationship. And you admonish when someone has done something wrong. For instance, if a person is a good singer, you would not admonish them to keep singing. The verb to admonish carries the idea that something needs to be corrected. So, according to Paul, elders are to admonish people under their care when they are doing or believing something wrongly. But it is assumed that the elder has a positive spiritual relationship with that person. Years ago at our church, the elders made some decision about something. and Afterwards, there was a man out in the hallway who disagreed with that decision. And he was in a group of people and he said, who do those guys think they are? Now it's his right to disagree with that decision. Um, you know, we try our best, but we probably get it wrong sometime. But that got back to the elders and um, we just thought it was disrespectful. Again, it's fine that he disagreed with the decision, but it's not fine to say, who do those guys think they are in a crowd of other church people? And so um, we appointed two of the elders to approach him and to admonish him about this. And they said to him, hey, it's fine that you disagree with our decision, but it's not okay um, how you are spreading dissent and disunity. And I'm sad to say that he didn't receive it. Uh, he and his family left the church after that. But let me ask you, how would you receive it if the elders admonished you about something like that? In my previous church, there was a man who quite often disagreed with things or didn't care for something the way it was done. And quite often after a church service, you'd find him out in the hallway uh, speaking to whoever would listen about how wrong something was, just spreading um, negativity and disunity. And I think the people of that church wondered, why doesn't the leadership do something about this? Why do they just allow this man to keep spreading his disunity among the body of Christ? And uh, they never did. As far as I know, he is still there and still doing the same thing. It is the elder's responsibility to protect the church and to help that individual by admonishing when someone is doing or believing something wrongly. And in this case, it was something the leadership needed to do, and I don't believe they ever did. By the way, that brings up the subject of church membership. Elders can only admonish or correct people who have committed themselves as a member of that church. When you commit yourself as a member of Lake Point or of any church, you are putting yourself under the authority of the spiritual leadership of that church. And so if you have hesitated committing as a member to Lake Point or to any church, I would challenge you to ask yourself why. Is it possible that you are resisting putting yourself under the spiritual authority of any uh, leaders? And uh, if that's the case, that is not healthy for your spiritual life. Now, let me just say that the leadership of any church is vitally important you must be able to respect and to follow the leadership of your church. And if you're in a church that you just can't respect the leadership, you cannot stay there because it's not healthy for you. It's not healthy for the church. You need to leave and find a church where you can respect the leadership of that body and then put yourself under the spiritual guidance of those spiritual leaders of that church. So the three things Paul lists that elders do for the church are, they work hard among you, they care for you in the Lord, and they admonish you. That's not an exhaustive list. That's not all they do. 
These are examples of the types of things God asks leaders to do to care for the people of his assembly. Now, Paul tells the Thessalonian Christians two ways church members are to respond to their leaders. And the first one is acknowledge them, verse 12. The Greek word is literally know them, as in the sense of know their true worth. So the New American Standard translates it as appreciate them. The English Standard Version translates it as respect them. So you know who your church elders are and recognize that they are vital in the functioning of the church. At Lake Point, we currently have seven elders, and here is a short word from each of them. Hello, everyone. John Jackson here. I've been an elder since 1989. The verse I'd like to share is 1 Samuel 12, 24. Be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. Good morning. My name is Andy Dale, and I've been an elder here at Lake Point since 1989. I'd like to share a verse this morning from Hebrews chapter 12. There it says, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Hi, church family. My name is Thomas Matai, and I think I've been an elder since 2012. The verse that I would like to share with you is uh, Galatians 2.20. There are many favorite uh, passages, but this one in particular uh, speaks to my heart because it just reinforces that uh, I cannot hack it without Christ living in me. So it says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in Jesus Christ, who died for me and gave his life for me. Hi, my name is Jim Fike. I've been an elder at Lake Point for about 10 years. I want to share a few verses from the letter to the Hebrews. This letter was written to the Hebrews to encourage them to persevere in their faith in the midst of difficult circumstances by arguing for the superiority of Jesus Christ. The author writes, Since the children have flesh and blood, he too, meaning Jesus, shared in their humanity so that by his death he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. My name is Chad Walters. I've been an elder with Lake Point since 2009. I hope this message finds you well during these times. I'd like to share a verse with you, Isaiah 41.10, which reads, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I'm Dean Johnson. I became an elder in 2001. Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Also, Matt Frazier is one of our elders, and he became an elder in 2018. The second way church members are to respond to their leaders is hold them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Verse 13. It's interesting that Paul doesn't say hold them in highest regard and love them because you like them or because you agree with them. No, he says do it because of their work. You love the church and they love the church. So respect them because they are doing work that you believe is important, work that God said needs to be done to care for his church. When you're choosing a church, look at the leadership, not just the style of music, not just the preaching, not just the youth group. Look at the leadership. Are they godly? Are they people that you can respect? Are they people that you are willing to put yourself under their spiritual authority? Now, here's some discussion questions for later. Number one, 
Did you ever leave a church because of its leaders? Two, did you ever stay at a church primarily because of its leaders? Three, would you like to be a church leader someday? Why or why not? And four, can you think of a time that you disagreed with the church leadership, but you stayed because you respected them? In closing, Let's take to heart the words of Hebrews 13, verse 17. Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. Father, thank you for your word. We pray for the leaders of Lake Point. We pray for our people. We pray that we would be a church that shines as a light in a dark place, and especially during this trying time of the quarantine in our nation. Thank you for Christ, and it's in his name that we pray. Amen. In response to the message, please sing with us before the throne of God above, and let us remember that our souls have been purchased by the blood of Christ, and our lives are hidden with Christ on high. Before we close, I would like to share with you all a blessing that we often say at the end of Wheaton Chapels. If you would like to receive the blessing, please hold your hands up like this to receive it. And if you would like to pray the blessing over someone, please reach out your hand or both hands and pray the blessing with me. God go before you to lead you. God go behind you to protect you. God go beneath you to sustain you. And God go beside you to befriend you. Do not be afraid. But may the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you always. Do not be afraid, but go in peace. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, Lake Point. Please go in peace.